Coffee Beast. Bottom lane has been pushed by carries. Are you a bad enough dude to gank bottom lane? More movie phone ask. Oh man, I forgot that we had that sweet new sting with like the Twitter and Facebook and everything that I made. Oh, it yeah. looks fantastic! Welcome everybody to episode 7 of Esports Canada TV. I'm your host, BSG Toaster. You can follow me on Twitter, at Quinn of the Net. You are watching us on twitch.tv slash Esports Canada TV. And I am joined by our special guest as well as my two hosts, ESC Jovian, a.k.a. Frank Ricci, and ESC Songers, a.k.a. Nick Song. How are you guys doing tonight? Well, well, thanks. Fantastic. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, our, um, indeed. Our, our pictures, by the way, John, are in the wrong spot. I've got Nick's Twitter and he's got mine, but that's okay. You're new oh. to this, so. Beggars, what choosers, and all that. What is this? I won't I let this small quarrel preempt our very special guest tonight. Guys, um, as you all know, WCG uh, Canada Nationals are happening starting next week and uh, the following weeks after, but next week is the Central Nationals. Um, in Toronto, and so, sorry, not this upcoming weekend, the weekend following, but we have the CEO of WCG Canada here to talk to us today about that, Terry Saint-Jacques Gagnon. Terry, are you there? Yeah, good evening, guys. Hey, Terry, how's it going? Good. Good, good. Um, Terry, what can you tell us about WCG Canada, and what makes uh, 2012 such a special year for the WCG tournament? Well, basically, WCG Canada is a tournament that's uh, being held around uh, the country. Uh, we have different uh, regional qualifiers, as you said. And there's one in Toronto uh, the, this upcoming, uh, or actually uh, the next weekend, 19th to the 21st of October. Uh, after that, we're going to be in Vancouver uh, from the 26th to the 28th. And uh, the last one will be in Montreal from, the, from November 2 to November 4th. Um, so basically, WCG Canada is an actual uh, version of the the World Cyber Games Grand Finals event that are held once every year. You know, so it's an annual event, um, and it regroups all the best gamers in various t game titles, and we try to to build up the national team and represent the country at the the Grand Finals. So, yeah, basically, it was it was started in uh, in two thousand one. So. Today, uh, or this year is our 12th year, mm -hmm. uh, making us probably the, the, the oldest gaming event in Canada or maybe even throughout the world. Mm. Uh, most of the competitors that were there in the past are actually, uh, are, they're gone now, uh, such as CPL or even ESWC is not really present in Canada anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, basically we've been, uh, we've been uh, keeping your ads up as much as we can in the past few years and now it seems to be uh, getting some movement momentum again and uh, it's getting bigger and bigger in Canada. Now I know that I believe it was uh, last weekend or the weekend before you guys had your online qualifiers leading up to the live event in two weeks um, and it was Henderlisk I believe who came out on top for that. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that tournament and how it went and um, how the play was? Yeah, actually, the the online qualifier were uh, were really great. We uh, really enjoyed it. We had a lot of players. It was the biggest online qualifiers we ever had in Canada, uh, with over uh, 300 players registered for the different games. Uh, so we have events in both StarCraft 2 and FIFA 12. Uh, not forgetting, actually, we also had Crossfire that were uh, ran uh, along with Z8 Games, the publisher uh, for the game in North America. Mm -hmm. um, so with all those three titles, we had uh, different teams taking or players uh, taking. Uh, each other into uh, for most of the tournaments it was uh, single elimination best of three uh, and then the winner would actually have a preferred 
uh, preferred seeding to the national finals or regional finals, if you want. And winners will also get their uh, their expenses paid uh, for uh, the in regards to accommodation or traveling for for the event. Um, so that's that that was that's what was uh, a stake here. Mm -hmm. uh, as you said, Andrelis actually won SC2. It was a great match. Uh, he, especially in the finals, I also remember, uh, if I remember, well, I think it was uh, Tubby against, um, um, I think it was Rice on the Saturday evening, which was another great game that went into uh, three matches. So yeah. that was, uh, we, we saw great matchups that weekend for, for StarCraft 2. As for FIFA, uh, Matt Wizaker would actually won the event. Uh, he had the upper hand really easily, almost via the opponents. He actually uh, tied once in group stage. Then he managed to win every other uh, matches he, he had to play in wow. uh, in a tournament, winning uh, winning with at least you know five goals ahead of everyone else at least <laughs> once. So you know it wasn't really a f uh, big contest for for him, but it was a way to secure his spot into the national finals for Toronto in two weeks. Fantastic. Um, just as kind of a background on you, Terry, um, when did you start working with uh, WCG? Um, actually, well, the way it started is I used to play uh, Counter-Strike 1.6 back in uh, early 2000s, uh, so from, from 2000 to uh, 2005. Eventually, uh, I moved on as, uh, as a referee. That's what uh, people know me, uh, you know, know me as, uh, as the chief referee for Counter-Strike 1.6 at the WCG Grand Finals. Um, or even in Canada as well as a tournament director. So that, that started in 2006 when the previous or former CEO of WCG actually asked me to help, uh, help them out as they didn't have anyone really um, knowledgeable of Counter-Strike 1.6 and God knows that it was probably a game where people was uh, complaining the most. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they, they decided to, uh, to hire me to run uh, different tournaments and events for WCG Canada and from there I uh, just went on. Uh, moved to the grand finals in within the the, the ladder of the WCG and last year uh, the uh, the former uh, CEO decided not to run WCG Canada and I picked it up along with a, a partner of mine uh, late in September we organized uh, qualifiers and sent managed to send two StarCraft 2 players which which was a first for Canada it was the first time we actually sent more than one representative for for the same game and uh, now this year we stepped it up with three StarCraft 2 players going to China as well as three FIFA players and five Crossfire players. So uh, a big total of 11. So that should, be, that should be a great year for Canada, hopefully. Yeah, fantastic. Um, now, uh, I know that the three games are Crossfire, FIFA, and StarCraft. What's kind of the thought process maybe from WCG Canada or is the whole global organization as to kind of what games they pick in a given year? Um, well, basically, games are you know always based on votes that WCG receive on their website. So, one thing that a lot of people are asking me: why is that game not there, and why is that game not included this year? And it was last year, or you know, mm -hmm. all sorts of questions. So, one thing that's really important is people have to vote for the, the, the games. If there's no votes, it's not even going to be looked at. Once the votes are in, basically what WCG does, it, it gathers all the information it can about the different publishers. They they have they, they actually have to get licenses and contracts. That's that's one part that most players ignore about how it works for big tournaments. Mm. You actually have to pay most of the time. You have to pay money to the publishers in order to have the right to use their game to to have a tournament with the cash prize at the end. Um, so so they, they they try to do contracts with different games. And for for an instance, this year um, we, we were not having League of Legends because uh, for for uh, various reasons uh, we. They had the previous contract, and then WCG changed its way, went mobile, and then decided to come back to PC gaming. And uh, when that was done, well, Riot Games actually had a uh, contract signed with two major uh, tournament, uh, one being uh, IPL and the other one, one being, uh, being the Riot Games tournament itself, yep. being held at the same time as the WCG Grand Finals in uh, December, early December. So. It, it was pointless for, for WCG at that time to try to make it a third big tournament in the same week, in the same, the exact same dates. Right. Um, and Naraya definitely agreed. And basically, that's how some games are sometimes picked, others are not. Games such as FIFA are, are usually, they're, they're a free bet as, you know, they, they, they probably have 94% of the, all the votes 
for all the sports titles. So if you combine every other sports, they 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 have six percent, and FIFA has the rest. Wow. So it's a safe bet, uh, unless <laughs> EA Sports change their mind and decide not to do it. Yeah. Basically, we can we can think it's it's probably going to be there for the next few years at least. Yeah. Um, probably the same thing with StarCraft 2. This year we, we saw WarCraft 3 making a comeback in the grand finals. I think the biggest reason is probably because it's in China and mm -hmm. WarCraft 3 is still pretty big over there, but uh, outside of China really it's uh, it's slowly dying and um, StarCraft 2 well, should be there hopefully for the next few years as well. Yep. Um, for anyone looking to attend the event um, just as a spectator um, in two weeks time in Toronto, what can they expect? Um, at the Eaton Center. Well, at the event themselves, um, spectators are welcome to come. They they can actually try different Samsung products. There's going to be a few exhibits. There there might even be some other contests related to other games uh, that might be included in some Samsung devices. I cannot sell the punch uh, right away as uh, <laughs> the, those are new products that are going to come up on the market. Uh, I think um, just at the same time as the event is launched. Yep. Um, but yeah, there's gonna be there's definitely gonna be stuff to do. Uh, at the same time, people are gonna be able to uh, walk around and you know just go stand behind the players and watch them play. There's not uh, there's not gonna be seating as most of our, actually all of our events are gonna be in mall and space is sometimes limited in those places. Um, and if it's not limited, it's usually expensive. Uh, so so there's not gonna be any seating for spectators. However, everyone's welcome to come by. It's free. Uh, you can look at the players uh, when they're in their matches, you can talk with them, you can exchange with them. We're also going to have probably a few few computers that are going to be uh, uh, free to use for uh, for game purposes. Uh, so that's going to be uh, that that should be something that's gets interesting. Obviously, at the beginning of the tournament, we're going to need all the computers to run the event. But as the tournament goes on, uh, we're going to require less and less computers. So we're going to have more for for the public to to play on. And there are going to be Series Seven gamers from Samsung. So the, you know the big machine there with uh, you know probably uh, I'm not sure of the specs yet for for, for the one we're going to have. Probably um, SLI or Crossfire's mm. uh, video uh, GPUs in it and 16 gig of RAM and such and such. So. One of the best uh, gaming rig there is. Cool. Um, are you personally going to be there in Toronto in two weeks' time? Pardon me, if you could just... Uh, oh, I asked if you were going to be there yourself in Toronto. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and I'm going to be there at, the, at all three events. Oh, uh, fantastic. Basically, it's uh, mandatory for me to, to be there and make yeah. sure that everything <laughs> uh, runs well and, and smooth. Uh, we're going to have people from Esports Canada as well, uh, some volunteer uh, helping out. Um, and there's going to be people as well from uh, LAN EPS in Montreal to help out with the with the event. Nice. Uh, as we're we're trying to make partnerships with a bunch of different players in within the Canadian scene for uh, for the upcoming year. Uh, we'd like to have a year-round program going across the country, giving a chance for everyone to qualify and eventually play in the national finals. Um, so that's that's our ultimate goal. Um, so we're looking into this, and we're. we're you know, trying to do partnerships in regards to volunteering and helping out different events, uh, and basically we're returning the favor later on uh, when they when these guys are having their own events, mm -hmm. um, as well as uh, basically uh, we're 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 taking any help we can. Uh, obviously, we're not gonna have a team of fifty volunteers for for twenty computer land, even if there's a hundred players coming. Yeah, but. You know the best best way best way people can can help WCG in this is just to attend, show your support uh, to gaming and uh, WCG. That will show sponsors that gaming is not just uh, you know a kids game uh, mm -hmm. anymore, and that they can actually it's worth for them to actually sponsor events and uh, you know make make uh, esports bigger in Canada. No, it definitely piqued my interest when I heard you guys were holding these events in malls and kind of more public spots instead of you know the arena down the road that unless you're going there specifically for that event, you're not going to know about it, you're not going to hear about it. Um, having it in the mall, I mean, that's going to attract so many fans who kind of didn't know that this thing exists. Maybe they play the games, you know, there's a the kid that plays FIFA and he's better than all his friends, but he kind of wants to take that next step and then he sees WCG while he's in the mall one afternoon. Um, that's going to be huge, so congrats on that. And I definitely uh, yeah, look forward well, to those three events. Yeah, it was something important for us. I think just you know get out there and make sure we actually get people that are not even, maybe not even even involved with the, the competition scene at this mm -hmm. point, and you know and just try to get them to 
you know, give it a shot. You, you, you might be better than what you think. Maybe you're going to get crushed the first time you play, but, you know, that's, that's how you progress as a player hmm. in every game, any sports, and I think that's the way it should be done. Most definitely. Um, Terry, um, before we let you go, any last shout-outs or things you wanted to mention um, about anything upcoming well, for like WCG? Thank, yeah, I would like to thank all of our sponsors, uh, Samsung, uh, Twitch TV, as well as Z8 Games and G4 Box, uh, you guys at Esports Canada, as well as Lanny TS. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm forgetting anyone, but uh, yeah, pretty much uh, all of our sponsors for their support and all. Uh, throughout the year and I uh, hope to see you guys at the event awesome I hope to make it out there actually um, thank you very much Terry you can follow uh, WCG thank on you. Twitter at WCGCA is WCG Canada and on Facebook at facebook.com slash WCGCA um, and I believe you can show up the day of in Toronto and try to compete as well Correct. Yeah, actually, for for FIFA, there's gonna be open spots for sure. If if you haven't taken part into the online qualification for StarCraft Duto, you definitely have to show up on the Friday if you want to qual pre qualify for the event. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the top 16 players from the online qualification attending the Toronto event are gonna be starting uh, their tournament on the Saturday, uh, probably at noon or so. Noonish. Awesome. awesome. Well, thank you very much, Terry, and good luck and um, best thank wishes you. to everyone at WCG Canada. Yeah, thanks. Have a, have a good one. We'll thanks, do. Have Terry. a Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Um, yeah, I am super stoked. I really, I'm kind of on the cusp right now of heading out to Toronto myself, both for WCG and another event. You should. Um, you should come down. That are going out for that. It'll be my big reunion with, with the boys. Um, no, we missed you, man. You should come downtown. We'll have a like, really crazy StarCraft weekend. Little Tony. We'll the best. Little Tony needs me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyone that was wondering, Frank and Nick obviously didn't um, speak too much there. We were having some audio difficulties with Terry. Um, couldn't hear some of us, and there was some cutting out and stuff. But he could hear me fine, so I kind of had to take the reins there. I wasn't trying to show about kick Frank and Nick off the show, because they are a very crucial part of Esports Canada TV. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> so we oh, should mention you. that the uh, the event starts at 10 a.m. on the Friday, and it's all day. So uh, for those of you who are wondering in chat what time of day it starts, uh, show up as early as 10 a.m. and uh, get in on the action as, as soon as it starts and, and participate all day if you like. We should go for FIFA. <laughs> <laughs> Just do it. I've never played <laughs> FIFA in my life, and I feel like I would do better at it than if I went to go try for StarCraft, which I play five games a day. So, <laughs> not to say that yeah. FIFA's like easy peasy or anything, but yeah, no, for sure. I bet it's it's like there's parts of it that's just as complicated as in StarCraft. Like we would get dominated by, I guess, like the people who play that. Like no lie. Yeah, we get wrecked. It's like, uh, right. just like I said before, when uh, Husky decided to play uh, Mortal Kombat versus a pro player, oh, and he's like, yeah, how hard could it be? <laughs> he just got wrecked. He got destroyed. <laughs> I am fixing your screen reasons now, guys. I apologize that I oh, had thank you. Uh... you. It's fine. No, no, just put me, in, put me in Frank's spot so I get all his followers. Oh, I can take this opportunity to mention that uh, Dave Creamer... Um, uh, Esports Extraordinaire actually mentioned me in one of his videos. Did you guys notice the, uh, the, na uh, the StarCraft naming uh, conventions video he did? Oh, no. is it? Is oh, so I can't one? mention when I make it into oh. an NASL um, video, but you can just plug yourself all day in an Ender Sword video? Well, <laughs> like you've had your moment of fame. Now this is mine. We'll wait for Nick to be popular, but yeah, my name is in there, so if you want to oh. know who's the person who names himself Frank, that's me. Why don't you just go post that link in the chat so people can just click it and oh, you can feel good. good about yourself. Yeah, <laughs> and then they can always watch it after as well, maybe not yeah. during the show. Yeah, exactly. Um, quick rundown of what we're going to talk about today, guys. Um, obviously, League of Legends has the World Championships that started on the weekend and will finish up this upcoming weekend. Um, fair bit of controversy following that with some internet difficulties. Uh, we're going to bring Tony Tran on, our local League of Legends expert, on after the break, and he's going to give us a rundown of exactly what happened, and we'll give our thoughts on that as well. Nick, I know you wanted to talk about some Dota 2 um, yep. happenings, and what else do we have here on the docket? Uh, <laughs> we have Heart of the Swarm, but we, 
obviously not going to get to we're, that. No, I think we're... Yeah. <laughs> there was a recent patch, too, like some big things. Maybe we'll get to ask a couple questions. We'll try to be... Okay. All right, all right, we'll try all right, to be quick. All right. Um, oh, jeez, I moved that. I, I'm just get okay. click happy, and I start moving the overlays and whatnot. Um... As well, um, the Ritmix Russian StarCraft 2 League, um, Scarlet just dominating once again. Um, Team Liquid News, um, signing of C, that's not even in the notes, but that is huge. Um, that is, yeah. As, as well, uh, GSL happening last week, which was epic. So and, much stuff, um, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Next Bonjour, yeah. Next Bonjour? Next Bonjour? Next Bonjour? I 100% agree that he is going to yeah. Totally. He's gonna win OSL and GSL. One hundred percent. This, this sport is one of those things where it's so fickle, right? You could be on top. I, I know it looks everything looks that way. It's just, man, he could have the greatest time, but you have to win everything. You have to get all the way through. So, yeah, it's, it's not it's not like a smooth sailing sort of thing. You just beat one yeah. guy and it's like boom right to the finish. Yeah. You're you're on a razor's edge at, at all times. You have to be on every time. He can have one bad day. And he's done. Oh, that's so true. He hasn't had a bad day yet. He no. <laughs> absolutely ruined Hero. Every game, he's just looked unbeatable. Yeah, so what was it? He three, or Sorry, are we talking about this right now? Is that what we're yeah. doing? Yeah, well, I guess we are. are. So he, uh, yeah, he 3 0 uh, Hero. I didn't even hear that. Oh, yeah. This is interesting because I saw in the Ritmax uh, Russian thing, I was looking forward to Hero playing against uh, Bomber. And then when I when I noticed the brackets got updated today, it just said win bomber and hero had nothing. It didn't say two zero or two one. I was like, does that mean, did he disqualify? So I wonder what's going on with hero. He got three zero, and maybe he was because he's kind of an emotional guy. So maybe he got all upset. And he's like, screw the RSL. I don't really want to play in it, or wh who knows what happened. But it seems like a lot of bad things are happening to hero lately. <laughs> I mean, he still does well in those tournaments, but uh, he hasn't had that big win in a while. Since yeah. he won, blah blah blah. Dreamhack, Dreamhack versus Puma. It yeah. was his dream. Yeah, there yeah. hasn't been a victory since. And I mean, he always makes it deep in GSL, at least round of eight. Um, so sad face for Hero, because he was awesome in NASL. He was super nice. You know what Even it was? With, like oh. the language barrier and everything. He was awesome. It, it was those manor manor nexuses against Puma at Dreamhack. The Starcraft gods. <laughs> frown upon him <laughs> <laughs> I was telling this story uh, the other day to someone when we were talking about iced coffees I was with my buddies who all played League of Legends and so they didn't really get who I was talking about but they got the, the comedy of the story um, when we were going to NSL for one morning when they were practicing we asked the Koreans the day before like what do you guys want like in the morning they were like oh uh, iced coffee iced coffee and they meant yeah. iced, iced cappuccinos from Tim Hortons right but we <laughs> Anthony, uh, James Bailey, and I, another esports scandal volunteer, we went to Tim Hortons. And we're like, all right, like, how many sh milks do these guys want? How many sugars? And we we're like, I don't know. Like, let's just get them all black, and then we'll get a bag of like milk and sugar. <laughs> so we got like five black ice coffees for uh, for MC oh, no. Puzzle, Alicia, Puma, and and Hero. And we were like, yeah, here you guys go. And you could just see them all just like take a swig and just be like. <laughs> so I had to go in like two hours later and clean up and like no one to touch their coffees and they all had ice caps oh. now. And it was just like Anthony we failed them <laughs> oh, we done goofed we done we done goofed. they were so polite they still took it yeah, oh yeah they, they were super nice but I felt bad and I still wake up sometimes in a cold sweat crying <laughs> um, <laughs> so that's the latest with GSL um, round of four takes place this week I believe and it's Rain versus MVP so that's kind of a true test for him if he can take out someone of MVP's quality who just never yeah. seems to fail. Another little tidbit, just a bit of a like little StarCraft news. Team Liquid Live is back again. And yeah. uh, this time it's hosted by Control and Cats. A great casting combo, I think. And uh, they just recently did Chef, and he was on there. <laughs> yeah, I heard uh, in Control say that they just spent the whole time trolling uh, Death. He's like, I don't know if we'll be able to keep that up for the entire show. <laughs> I heard for those people who don't know, right? Team Liquid Live is uh, it's a show where they bring on pro players and they play games against uh, the fans. And sometimes they have they make them do silly things, right? So sometimes it's uh, I think they give them like well, handicaps, right? Like sometimes there's handicaps. They have yeah, to do GSL did the same thing uh, last season. Yeah. So it's right. It's really, it's really funny to watch because you get like the host like just doing so much cool banter and whatnot. And there's no it's bigger kind of trolls than mm -hmm. in control and cats to be hosting that. 
Is it every other Wednesday it runs again? I can't remember now. It's like every other week, though, right? Is it on Wednesday? Yeah, no one would be oh. stupid enough to host a weekly show. <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> Who does that, right? Well, just uh, if you guys find it or look it up, I'm sure you'll be able to find it at the time. Sorry, we don't quite have that right now. But... Um, Dota 2, Nick, before the break, if you want to squeeze that in. Yeah, so recently Dota 2, new update, lots of different changes there, especially to the balance of heroes. Um, Frank was mentioning earlier that Alchemist, which he hates, and I don't know why. No, I, think... I don't. I love Alchemist, and I used to okay. play him a lot. It's just in Dota 2, he's like one of the worst heroes, right? But he's the uh, same. Like they, they didn't change him from the one. He he used to be better. I don't know. There's something about him now. That, anyways, he got buffed, right? So his his stun now does a splash damage or does splash stun. Um, just like Sven stun. Um, also, the enemy doesn't see his timer when he's charging his unstable oh, concoction. That's such a so yeah, now now you don't have those people who like silence him at the last second so that he double stuns himself and whatever. Um, his acid got buffed. His alt got buffed. His uh, goblin's greed got buffed. Everything got a little better. Um, so he's you're gonna see him rise now, just like Batman. Um, <laughs> they have a they have a new weapon in there, the shadow blade. Uh, yeah, it's not. Shadow blade it's more. Recipe got changed. Yeah, um, I have a funny story about this. Um, I was playing right after the patch, and they had changed this. So now, basically, what is it? Instead of having a quarter staff increase, which increases your attack speed and damage, and then a claymore, you get this thing called a shadow amulet, which basically is like a shadow blade. It fades you out over a couple of seconds. I didn't know this at the time. So here I am going. I'm at pretty low health. I'm going to the side shop trying to buy this item, and. Um, the opposite team sees me going there of low health, and they're coming. I'm like, no problem. I have the recipe. I have my claymore. I just need a quarter staff. I buy my quarter staff. The recipe doesn't complete. Yeah. And so I'm freaking out. I'm like, what the heck is going on? This is a bug or anything. And then I get nuked and I die, and that's when I find out about this new item. Uh, way to read the patch notes, Nick. Way to stay on top of these books. <laughs> yeah. I read usually just read the first line, and it's like something, if it's I like it, and then I'll read the rest. If I don't like it, I'll stop. Pretty bad but habit. Hey, but. The amulet's pretty cool. It's, I guess it's kind of like a, a Templar Assassin. You, like, fade out on the spot, is it? No, is it's just right? it's like um, it's just like a Shadow Blade, except it's not instant. You fade out over 2.5 seconds, oh, you, and then you you're can still move. Bit. Yeah. I thought for some reason you could move, but it also doesn't affect channeling. So like uh, during Witch Doctor's alt or Rasta's alt or whatever, or not Rasta's alt. Ah, try it. I mean, try certain it. skills you can uh, still invis. I, I see in the show notes here as well. Uh, MLG has started, and I'll throw that up on the screen. Uh, prize fights for Dota 2. Um, I guess the prize pool is not too too much, um, but it's a pretty good outlet, obviously, to watch Dota 2. <coughs> I believe every week. Is it not? Uh, yeah, it's every week. And last week was Navi versus Complexity, which I didn't get to catch. But it's really cool. Yeah, they have this little kind of like Fight Club sort of format where they're just bringing in different teams. And it's just an extra thing that you can get to watch. And that's awesome. The more esports, the better. Most definitely. Um, I'm getting some heat from the chat for calling Tony Tran our local um, <laughs> um, League of Legends expert. Uh, Lucas Wanek obviously has that title. Um <laughs> 2400 ELO up in this B. Um, so, <laughs> so Lucas, maybe he'll come on uh, after the break with Tony and they can both um, drop them knowledge bombs on us. Um, For sure. Because Tony has a lot of notes about what happened over the weekend. Um, All right. One last thing. Yep. Gotta mention this. Most definitely. So, in Dota, there's a new feature which allows you to create your own teams now. Before, you know, you would just get in a party with five random friends. But now, they're, I guess they're making them a little more structured, so you can have like these casual leagues with your friends. And you're able to upload uh, little images for your team. So if you remember the International, when people were playing on the ground of their base, there was little team logos. So you can do that now for your team. And if all five of you are in a party and you're in a game, your logo appears now on the, in your base and your banners. So I thought that was kind of cool. Just makes it a little more of a community go uh, too. So that's a new feature that just came up. Uh, Minx asking me, Nick, for you to talk about Roshan. I have no idea what happened to oh, Roshan. So there was this thing Frank where I think Chen was able to. Uh, if oh, this that is what thing! Asking, oh, I saw that. Yeah, day. Chen was able to control Roshan. And because he could only take magic damage, all the creeps were ignoring him, so he's just wandering around and stuff. It's, it's pretty funny. Apparently, that got patched right quick, though, so yeah, that didn't yeah. last very long. I saw that screenshot, yeah. Yeah, pretty funny. <laughs> oh, Roshan. 
Alright, um, guys, we are going to take a break now. Uh, after the break, we'll be back with a bunch of League of Legends talk um, with Tony and possibly Perplexed as well. We'll see if he wants to join the channel. Although we don't have a five-man overlay, so one of you is not going to have your beautiful face shown on our stream. So we'll be back with a bunch of... Box. Yeah, share. You guys are gonna share a box. Share a box. Yes, their two faces. <laughs> and kiss. now kiss. Uh, you're watching Esports <laughs> Canada TV live on Twitch.tv/slash Esports Canada TV. You can check us out online, EsportsCanada.ca, as well as on Twitter at Esports underscore Canada and Facebook.com/slash Esports Canada. We will be right back. up overlays I was talking about. Um, I'm going to take 30 seconds to fix those. Frank and Nick, give me that time filler you guys are so good at. Time filler? I can talk about... <laughs> oh, sorry. The other Nick's one. Okay. Um, I, I can talk about Ritmax a little bit of uh, what happened there. The, uh, yeah, most definitely. Well, I'm Tony and yep. So uh, I caught a bit more um, on Imbalance TV and uh, I watched some pretty good games. There was uh, The first game I watched was Roxas Titan versus Empire Cast, and Titan just straight up 3 0 Cast. Uh, it, was, it was pretty crazy. Um, but then beyond that, then I watched uh, Roxas Frere play against Nurtio. What was what was funny here was that, first of all, Nurtio won the first game. He skipped Roaches, he just did Lane, went straight to Baroods, and just obliterated Frere. In the second game, um, Frere chose uh, Entombed Valley, and, and uh, Nurtio canceled his natural and went for a big bust and <laughs> so he, he brings all these links down he morphs them all in front of the ramp he goes for the bust and um frere defends it beautifully puts up a pile on just at the last second puts up force fields just the last second kills all the links kills all the brood uh banelings then um nurture tried it again with another huge group again gets perfectly defended <laughs> and <laughs> sorry that's, that's, a great that's, a, that's a good photo man is tony ever gonna be happy to see that <laughs> Always the best pictures. Okay. Uh, Carry on, Frank. No problem. I'll end this quick. Anyway, yep. So when when the second Bailey bus failed, Nurtio types out joke map 
joke race lost not accepted. <laughs> it was like, oh, oh, there's that bad man Inertio is known for. So Inertio obviously went on to win that, and uh, Scarlet won uh, her match so against Feast a while back, so now she gets to play against Nurtio. That still hasn't happened, but I did want to mention that um, Scarlet, uh, so she 3 0 Feast, and I wanted to mention that in Game 3, she did the exact same strat that Hendralisk was doing during WCG. She did Nidus, Hydra, Ling Queen, uh, just like Henry, and it just killed Feast. Like, Protoss have a lot of trouble defending that timing, So, but it was pretty cool to see almost the exact same build uh, between Hendralisk and Scarlet, and I know they practice a lot, so they probably have perfected this together, but uh, it's it's really powerful. Protoss should really look out for it. And that, now that they've used it so many times, I'm sure that people will know how to defend against it better, but uh, it's, it's uh, stronger than you might think. What time does it usually hit at? I'm just wondering. Uh, I didn't notice the timing because while I was watching that, I have a team, so I'm also watching my children. But oh, like okay. I would see this night pop up and then all these units spew out and just kill oh. everything. And Feast frantically moves all his probes out, tries to build a. a it was on Cloud Kingdom. I think all the times I've seen this was on Cloud Kingdom. So it might be a Cloud Kingdom specific map, one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then he tried to put a, a ninja a nexus out in the corner, but he just stopped the bleeding and it was over. Is that enough time, John? That's Don't fantastic. I was done 45 minutes ago. All right, um, League of Legends held their World Championships on the weekend, the semifinals all the way up to the finals, it was supposed to be, um, and then the finals happening next week um, in L.A. again. And actually, there's a guy from Esports Canada, um, Nick So, who runs Halifax Barcraft, and Dal not Nick So, not Nick Song. I know. I know, but sometimes you guys confuse us. I would never do that, ever. Yes, you would. Because one of you is awesome like and the other sucks. <laughs> um, yeah, he's heading down to uh, L.A., and he's going to be there watching the finals, so hopefully he can do us up a little report or something. Maybe live tweet? Is that a thing? I don't know. Um, I think all tweeting is live is enough. <laughs> Just type it, and it shows up, right? You can schedule you have, tweets. You have a turn-based uh, Twitter over in uh, Oh, my God. <laughs> so, League of Legends <laughs> happened like on the weekend. That. It's coming up again. <laughs> Tony Tran uh, watched it faithfully all weekend long, and he has some things to tell us about that. Tony, are you there? I'm here. Thanks for having me on. No problem, Tony. You are our one and only MOBA uh, League of Legends expert. There is no one else oh. in Esports Canada who has as much knowledge or skill in the game as you. Uh... <laughs> Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tony, tell us about um, the Worlds on the weekend. What what happened? What went down? Well, this weekend was basically the Season 2, like, the lead-up to the Grand Finals, right? And basically, we had teams qualifying out of, out of Korea, out of Asia, out of North America, and out of Europe. And what happens was, this was the playoffs, where we play off to the point where we have our two last teams standing. And... That was basically the event. So what happened was on Friday we had the playoffs as well. And Nick's telling me that uh, <laughs> Korean is Asian. No, Korean is got to qualify as their own separate entity. Well, they do, eh? Oh. Yeah, I was just talking about geography-wise, <laughs> but okay. Okay. Applaud, applaud. I accept your uh, correction. Carry on, Tony. Moving on. So cool things to know is... They started off on Thursday and ended on Saturday, and then they don't have the finals till the Saturday after. I just that's really that's a really weird schedule. I don't know what you guys think about it. Um, I think that with the length of League of Legend games, um, that pretty much every game is going to be at least like a half hour time commitment from the time you choose champions and everything is set to the end of the game. You're looking at half hour, 45 minutes, hour plus. If you're having a best of three, that's at least twice. So going into the finals, you know the finals is at least going to be a two-hour thing pretty much no matter what. I mean, GSL does this. They hold their finals on its own special day. Um, and if you look at MC versus... Uh, who was it? Uh, the, the most recent GSL. It was a first-time winner. Uh, seed, yeah, I'm Seed. Um, they had their championships and Seed for Wundum, and the entire thing was like 50 minutes long. And, like, they had a huge setup on the beach and everything. They used it again for GSTL, but that was, like, their whole thing, and it was, like, a 45-minute event, which kind of sucks. But for League of Legends, when you know that those games are going to take that long, having an extra weekend and building that whole event around, I think it's a really smart business decision, at, at least. Um, and also from a spectator's point, if you're having a three-day thing and it's 
three days all day of League of Legends um, on the third day to have your finals and to have that much hype behind it. I mean, it's huge taxing on the players and on the fans as well. So, yeah, having it on the, on the weekend following doesn't really bother me too much. Well, uh, I was watching Live on 3, and they said something interesting. They built it like the Super Bowl, right? Like, mm -hmm. er, there's a match every Sunday until they reach the Super Bowl weekend, and they wait, like, an extra two weeks or whatever, right? That's also to allow the players to have these, like, press conferences and basically exactly. build up pipe into the finals, which I guess was the plan until this weekend happens. <laughs> <laughs> So, so starting off on Thursday, we had the group play. We had basically two group. Okay, first they drew groups for uh, each, for basically which group, which teams end up in which group. I'm just pulling up the Leagueopedia right now to have a quick look. So it was TSM that had the buy as well as the Taipei Assassins. Team World Elite and Moscow Five, so those five teams are automatically in the quarterfinals. The next eight teams, which are Azubu Frost, Invictus Gaming, CLG Prime, CLG EU, SK Gaming, Najin Sora, Sagon Jokers, and Team Dignitas, had to play the group stage in order to make it through the quarterfinals. So those two group, uh, those two groups were basically played out on Thursday. It was. Well, Zubu Frost basically uh, beat everyone, as well as Najin Sword. The two Korean teams just dominated their groups, followed by in Group A, Invictus Gaming. It was a pretty tight group in Group A. Uh, it was arguably the most competitive, where uh, there was a chance where we'd have a three-way tie for second place between Invictus Gaming, CLG Prime, and SK Gaming. With the other group, it was more of a walkover. Everyone expected CLG EU to make it through, and Najin Sword made it through. The one thing to note from this is uh, there were two North American teams, which were Dignitas and CLG Prime. And CLG EU, I mean, CLG Prime was the only team that uh, brought home a North American win against any matchup. <laughs> wow. And they would continue on to hold that title. Like, TSM did not win any games against Izubu Frost on Saturday. So maybe we're f seeing the same pattern in League of Legends as we see in, Nor in StarCraft 2. Just uh, Korean domination? Yeah. Why would it be so much different than, like, let's say, Chinese domination in uh, a mobile like Dota? Why would it be so much different in LoL? They're not that much different of a game, are they? Uh, Your they're, thoughts, Tony? They're definitely or, different, yeah. but I think it has to do with that whole culture of putting in the hours and practicing 12 to 14 hours where everyone else is practicing 6 to 8. Could be that, yeah. Yeah. So they just picked their battles. They went. They all went for Dota 2 instead of uh, LoL to practice? I Possibly. guess so. Oh, or shoot. Chinese well, China, China has a huge following in, uh, in Dota 2 from what I remember. Mm -hmm. Which is actually the interesting story of the second day. So, second day we had M5 versus IG. M5, one of the favorites to make it through to the finals, defeated IG 2 0. The next game was uh, Taipei Assassins versus uh, Najin Sword. Now, Najin Sword was the other favorite. They were favorited to win this game. However, Taipei Assassins ended up upsetting them with a 2 0 victory over them. Mm -hmm. Assassins so, took the that's sword. That's the one that we caught, right? <laughs> <laughs> you saw that game, right? Yeah, we caught that game, the end of that game, and you saw me, friend. I was like, no way this happened. <laughs> yeah, you were. You should have saw Tony was flipping chairs, throwing desks out the windows. <laughs> yeah, clean up after party was great. <laughs> so so now, go on, sorry. So, the interesting thing about this day was the Zubu Frost and TS the TSM game. Where there was one point during the TSM versus the Zubu Frost game, there was a pause. And during that pause, one of the Zubu Frost players looked up at the screen and looked at the mini-map. Now, uh, Frank, you saw the part of the low playoffs, and you saw the boots that they had, right? Like, yep. Why don't yep. you describe what you saw? So, I mean, many of you know how they're set up in, in some of the other pro sports. They'll have booths, and they're pretty contained. You can't really see the screen in this format. And I guess maybe it had to do with the fact that it was all outdoors. They had this... Where was it again? Was it in L.A.? It was yep. in L.A. Yep. Yeah, so they had this big outdoor 
like a um, arena sort of not arena whatever like Grand amphitheater stand. sort of thing yeah. happening yeah and all they had was just two desks the desks were angled slightly so that they couldn't see each other's screens but they were angled slightly and there was no overhang so that you could basically like look up and just behind you to see the screen itself the screen that was showing to the spectators in the audience so this is the drama that tony is kind of bringing up that one of those players i guess allegedly or did looked up at the screen and was able to discern a lot of information from that because uh, you could see the minimap, you could see where all the heroes are, you can figure out all this stuff. What about soundproofness? How was that handled? Was, well, was it just headphones? It was just headphones. Oh, okay. The, so the, ear, the, ear, the earbuds with the earphones over them. Oh, okay. Yeah, That's, which is pretty standard for most. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but um, like, yeah, just because like, in other sense things, sense. it's like they have the soundproof booths as well, right? Yeah, so it this also, was minus any booth. Okay. It also should be noted that Riot has actually looked into this, thanks to the community concerns, and they come out with a statement saying, denying it, saying that we talk to our refs, we look at the admins who, who are watching the games the entire time, and they felt like there was no way any team could cheat. <laughs> but if you if you go to Reg, if you listen to Reginald's vods or vlog, vlog or whatever you call them, um. You see him talking about the Zubu Frost cheating incident, where he's like, we sent four men top. Nobody does that, but a Zubu Frost was able to react to that. Because the, the idea was to get that first kill and put them ahead and win in the early game. But a Zubu Frost was able to uh, react to that. They even pinged that they saw four people going top. And that itself was a little discrepancy. And that's rough. Man, all this all this drama happening around these law games. Really two million sucks. two million dollars on the line. That's that's, that's a huge deal. That's true. Yeah. Um and what about really... what about on the last day, Tony? I know there was a lot of connectivity issues and Riot kind of had to finally throw in the towel. <laughs> well on the last day it was it was late to uh, have C O G E U take on World Elite as the last quarter finals. Uh the last quarter finals match. And the first game went pretty smooth. It was World Elite 1, 1-0 one for World Elite. Move on to Game 2. Game 2 started off. World Elite was ahead. And then what happened was they disconnected. And they were given, right, gave them the choice to either regame or start off where you were. And they chose to regame. Mm-hmm. Now, when they regame for the second game, CLGU was behind in the beginning again, but they they held out. They basically got to the point where they were more powerful in the late game and basically won game two. So they were basically given a gift almost. Right. Now moving on to the third game, this is where things get fun. <laughs> the first game apparently lasted uh, about 30 minutes long where WE was ahead, but the game disconnected and uh, basically another game was awarded again. <laughs> Moving on to game two of game three. This time it was a 70 minute long game where COG was behind the entire time. It was basically 6-7 for WE for 45 minutes. And COG basically waited their time, waited until they were finally ahead. They were about to push to win. Then disconnect happened. Oh, no. <laughs> Moving so on. that was the second attempt to play the third game. Now we're moving on to the third attempt. Yeah, the game three of game three. <laughs> game three? All of game three. Yeah. It was... COGU came out really early, really ahead early on and was winning until another disconnect happened. And now this was 25 minutes into the game. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Now, after that, Riot was just going, what the hell, this happens... This is happening frequently, right? Mm-hmm. And basically, they took down the stream. They basically, I think they had a meeting of some sort to make a decision to postpone the games to a later time this week. And yeah. A later time this week, and it will be streamed from an unknown location. Now, okay, two things. When I first heard about this, I was with some friends who were actually playing in a League of Legends tournament on the weekends. And right after it, they were all talking about the worlds, and I hadn't really been following since 
day one and they said, did you hear that the internet went down and it was a hacker who brought down either like the riot servers or the internet at the venue or whatever it was. And then I saw like one Reddit post where it was mentioned as well. And it's funny because you mentioned they're having it at an undisclosed location. Um, huh. Is there any connection between these two stories? Is Did anything come out that in fact it was a hacker or some sort of group, malicious group or anything? Did anyone claim this or was it literally just the internet sucked that day according to d-man during the stream he said that we were using five percent of north america's bandwidth now, of course the other nine five ninety five percent was the porn so <laughs> <laughs> so it's all but, used up it's all used up uh it could be that there could be a hacker bringing down but in the past it's been brought up why don't we have land which is basically, you don't even have to release it. You can just have a terminate version of the game. Very self-contained, very whatever, right? Yeah. But then you're still using a lot of internet with the stream and whatnot. But I guess it's less... I don't it's know, like so if the stream goes down, the game could still continue or something mm -hmm. like that, right? Yeah. yeah, and you can save the replay as well and rebroadcast that, re that later. Game seems to be shifting away from this uh, this LAN thing, you know. But these days, everything has to be like connected online. Everything needs to be. I know they uh, were playing a different version. They were playing like a, a championship hotfix, so they weren't playing on like legit open public servers. I know that much. They were using. Um, it was before the patch. Uh, right after Diana, I think. After they released Diana, the mid So. Yeah. Alright, Tony. Well, um, we're definitely um, going to look to see what happens in uh, the middle of the week, I'm guessing, is when they're going to have uh, this remaining matchup. And then, of course, the finals next weekend in L.A. Um, and Nick So is going to be there, so hopefully we can get some first-hand impressions from him. Uh, I think he might actually wrangle himself up into a, a tour of the Riots um, mm -hmm. building as well. So maybe we'll have him on um, the weekend after. Um, to talk about that if he is in fact available. Um, the other reason I want to talk about Nick So and the Halifax guys is of course um, Frag for Cancer is happening this upcoming weekend in Halifax on Saturday and Sunday starting at 12 p.m. Um, Atlantic Standard Time <coughs> meaning 11 o'clock Eastern. Uh, they're going to be playing a ton of games League of Legends, StarCraft 2, CSGO, um, a slew of fighting games. All the guys from Rolston Arcade will be there hosting that. Um, Lag TV is going to be there casting some StarCraft 2 games and providing their own content. There's going to be a ton of booths, some prizes, and swag giving away. Um, Bell Lion Fiber Op will be there on Sunday streaming. Um, and as well, Esports Canada TV will be streaming some of the League of Legends matchups. Casted hopefully by Tony and um, Lucas. Lucas, Lucas, aka Perplexed. Um, so definitely tune into Esports Canada TV next weekend, Saturday, probably starting at around one or one Eastern or noon Eastern, um, pretty much until nine Eastern or ten. In the evening will be everything leading up until probably the semis or the finals for League of Legends. So it'll be some good matchups. I know a couple of the teams that are going that are actually fairly good. Um, so those will be some good games for sure, so please check those out. Um, as well, the following weekend, of course, we have WCG Canada at the Eaton Center. Uh, Frank and Nick and Tony, will you all be there? Oh, yes, sir. You better come down, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no promises. Um, also, that weekend, guys, if you can't make it to WCG, um, there is a massive LAN going on at the AMD headquarters hosted by the guys over at Overclock.net. Um, best hardware forum for Canadians out there right now. Um, they're hosting a private LAN for 112 participants. Um, you have to be a member of Overclock.net and it is free to attend. And if you look at the schedule posted in their forum, they have a, an official post there. And I think we reposted it on our um, channel, so Facebook and Twitter. You can look for that. Um, there's like free pizza all day, a bunch of swag, just like the crazy stuff. And it's a 24-hour land happening from Saturday at 10 a.m. till Sunday at 10 a.m. in Markham, Ontario. So if you can be one of those lucky 112 people, um, 
congrats to you because you get free pizza like five times in that 24 hours. It just looks like an awesome time, and they're playing a bunch of sweet games. Um, Richard Jandris, who's doing our website right now, um, also remember Esports Canada is helping organize um, the land. So good I was job, actually Richard. there last time. They helped the land there. It was an awesome time. Oh yeah. You basically went there, and if you're lucky enough, you can basically win enough parts to build a new computer. Wow. Right <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's at the AMD headquarters, and it's oh, all, man. like, Radian stuff. And um, they feed you well, too, like... Yeah. They, it was, like... There, was, there wasn't a time I wasn't playing video games, drinking, or eating. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds oh, like the best weekend ever. Sounds like every Friday yeah. night I've ever had. <laughs> it's like when Cartman was playing WoW, and they just bring you food, and you... Poop in a little dish and stuff. They, yeah, I don't, I don't think they handled the pooping though, but, um. <laughs> oh. Oh, well. There's also the Untouchables land happening on October 27th. October 27th? Um, yeah, we're running out of time right now, but we will talk about that and maybe get a little sneak preview uh, the week before that happens. Um, I did just post the um, Facebook event for the uh, Halifax. Uh, frag for cancer in the chat on Twitch, so please check that out. And even if you're not attending, definitely tune into the stream and donate. All the proceeds go to uh, cancer uh, research. So please, please, please do that, and it's going to be a very fun time. I will be there. I'm actually going to be running get this the League of Legends side of the tournament. Uh, I'm not sure how I got roped into that. <laughs> so so good at League of Legends, I guess Riot's Riot sending a ton of sweet swag. And we're going to be running kind of an informational booth, um, giving people the chance to learn more about League of Legends. Anyone who doesn't know too much about the game, if you've been living under a rock and or playing Xbox for the last um, two years and don't know what LOL is, then <laughs> you can come by the info booth and maybe get some swag, lanyards, water bottles, things like that. Um, so I'm really excited for Frag for Cancer because this is like the first event in Atlantic Canada that I get to go to that's not just like a one-day, um, one-off thing. Mm -hmm. Um... Other than that, you guys have anything coming up uh, this week? Um, nope, we're going, definitely going to that Eden Center thing. But also, one thing I want to mention is that um, on the 20th, um, Second Life, it's a Extra Life. It's like a, another um, a charity. <laughs> you said for, Second Life. Yeah, I sorry, like, I meant Extra Life. I was like, life. Nick, if you're playing Second no, Life, so like, <laughs> <laughs> you can no wrong. longer be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Extra Life. It's an organization, and I have, just to tell people to check it out, I have a couple of friends who are doing that sort of thing. So it's like a marathon where you play video games for 24 hours, mm -hmm. and people donate money, and you donate that money to cancer research. So, those, you know, if you have time, check it out. It's a good cause. Those type of streams yeah. are very popular on Reddit. It seems like, at least maybe in the past, not so much anymore, they've kind of um, worn themselves out. But there was always kind of once a month, it was, hey, I'm streaming 24 hours of Yep. the worst games ever um, come donate for like water for Africa or yep, Doctors exactly. Without Borders or, or some different kind of charity and they're always super fun there's always just a big group of people providing commentary and kind of beating those games you didn't think were beatable or playing like the worst games ever that you only ever heard about so they're definitely very fun to watch um, that is it for us from this evening Frank nope. any last words oh Frank's yes. daddy uh, talk here comes words of wisdom nope, nope. it's because you guys are such jerks and you keep skipping my hot snuff which I so meticulously prepared. <laughs> Frank, those been, have uh, been skipped for the last six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm not even words. You're not even friends. So I just have you know that when I was at Tony's house, there was maybe five of us. Well, at the time, there was four of us. And we were just, uh, we brought this, this, these notes and we brought up all the things we went through. Them. We had a great time. We were drinking booze, we were drinking beer, we were drinking whiskey, we were eating pizza, and we were talking about StarCraft. And it was a great time. And we joked about how we should make a show about this where we just like ask these questions, do trivia and stuff like that. And it was like really engaging. I thought it was really fun. I might have to make a whole nother show just so that we can talk about this hot stuff. Maybe we'll do like a hot special the night yeah. before hot's release or something. We'll do like an do impromptu, out. not Monday night. Well, the game will probably be released on a Tuesday, so maybe it will be Monday night. Um, but we'll have a whole show called The Frank Ricci Presents StarCraft there 2 Out of the Swarm. And Nick and I won't even show up, and you can just nope. talk to yourself. Just be you. <laughs> yeah, it'll be the perfect show. Don't worry, Frank. We still have our Friday night ideas. Yeah, let's do it, man. Let's not even... Uh, I'll, get a, I'll get a poker table and everything. Don't worry. Oh, see? Big things are happening. Big things are happening at Tony's house. <laughs> <laughs> 
But anyways, I had a great time this week, and I'm going to continue to play uh, Borderlands 2 with Nick and Co. and probably Tony. Uh, not you, John, because you're a jerk. And um, that's about it. Uh, fantastic. Um, follow us on Twitter, as usual, at esports underscore Canada, and all of our personal Twitters. Everyone point to the bottom of your screen. Nope. Top of mine. My bottom. Tony Good catch, to the top Frank. You are smart. It looks like Tony's already pointing to his He's screen, already so. pointing. Two for um, point. And on Facebook, facebook.com slash esports Canada. Um, and also next week, Twitch.tv Esports Canada. Uh, we have Ken Silva on next week, the president mm -hmm. of Esports Canada. Everyone stand at attention right now. Our president is coming on to the show. Ken just returned from Korea um, yep. and met with some very, very cool and important people. And there's some big things happening for Esports Canada and Esports in Korea. And Ken has all the news on that. So he's going to be joining us next week. And we might even fill up the whole hour with him. Because he was there for yeah. a whole week, and he's got a ton of news for us. So thank you very much, Ken, and we can't wait for that. Yeah, it's too bad we have to wait seven days, but I'm looking forward to it. Six days, 23 hours. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> Good night, Who's everyone. The uh, I night. believe I believe Sticky Flames is happening. I'm not sure if it is. Zeke.com, Z33K.com, slash Sticky Flames. BSG tournament. Well, bye. Bye, guys. Thanks, everyone. Shout out to Swift Hank, duh, who said that I was looking fresh at NSL. Beast.